How can people living under tyrannical governments make their voices heard and become advocates of change? People living under tyrannical governments have have a huge burden. The first, I think that um, uh, you know that 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 they need to understand is that the change they seek will not come from outside; it comes from inside them. When I led the citizens' movement in Zimbabwe, one of the phrases we coined, which is a phrase that is no, uh, you know, known uh, globally. Uh, you know, is that we are the people we have been waiting for. Um, and this is a, a, a critical element of bringing change uh, in that if you do not participate in crafting or at least in delivering the kind of change that you want, you are never going to own the freedom that you expect to come you know, from it. So that's number one, is that that change that people may want in a tyrannical situation actually comes from the people. It's more sustainable. Uh, it's one that they can uh, you know, you know, direct in the way that they want to direct rather than it being delivered you know, to them or for them by external powers as has happened in some places you know, in the past, when we led this flag citizens movement, one of the biggest challenges we were dealing with was fear, a population of people that had been cowed, that had been brutalized for years, and so had learned to be quiet, had learned to stop participating, had had, had learned to stop being citizens, and had learned to stop using their voice, and in particular, uh, you know, exercising their constitutional right. And that leads me to the second aspect of how constitutions in nations in most cases provide for citizens to be able to challenge their government. In Zimbabwe, our constitution gives us the right uh, to challenge government policy. It gives us the mandate, in fact, through our free expression, through the freedom of speech, freedom of association, to be able to say we don't want this or to be able to say this is not uh, working or this is not right. So I think that's one of the things, uh, you know, that, that uh, citizens living in tyrannical regimes can hammer on. You have laws, you have constitutions, and even if the tyrannical government does not recognize those laws, which is what happened in Zimbabwe. What's happening in the process is that you are exposing them. And, and, and the thing about searching for freedom is that it is not an event, it's a process. When we started the citizens' movement in 2016, we were building upon the kinds of resistance movements and resistant campaigns that had been laid before us by other organizations and other individuals and other parties. And we were able to then take the wins from those periods and those movements and build upon them. And as I speak right now, there is a new uh, campaign and a new drive that's building upon what we achieved between 2016 and 2019. So it's a process, it's not an event. Every there must always continue to be a presence of the citizen within the space, even if it is restricted in some way, shape, or form. The citizen must be must be present. The third thing that I would want to um, give as a way in which people living in tyrannical regimes can can begin to bring change is to embrace technology. In Zimbabwe, one of the things that was difficult for us to do was to control our narrative. It was to be able to speak our story, to tell each other, number one, as Zimbabweans, what we were going through, to mobilize each other around our vision or our idea for change. That was difficult to do because we didn't control the channels of communication. The propaganda of our government meant that we had no access to newspapers. We had no access to uh, television channels. But when technology came on board with the advent of social media, that became a space that we could use. That became a space that we could you know, campaign on, that we could network on. Uh, you know, to be able to go forward. And of course, most importantly, th this is a platform in which the rest of the world can hear our story. Because after you have, after you have discovered your voice 
and you have let your voice out and loose and you have mobilized each other and you are now present in this space, you now need to seek solidarity of like-minded people globally because that is an important aspect of getting freedom is the solidarity of uh, the, the freedom community globally. So that would be a, a little bit of a framework, if I can call it that, that, that people in tyrannical, living in tyrannical situations can build around. Every situation will be different, but those are some of the basic uh, bases to be able to hit. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this video, you may find some of our other work interesting. Check out another video here. Also, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button below, leave a comment, and follow the IATP on Twitter at the underscore IATP.